Hello and welcome back to another video. This is going to be the final match of our remote local toxic cup. We did wait this and so we're hoping to go for zero. And for some reason, I forgot to record the intro like I normally do for the rest of these videos. So you're getting this version where my face is all big and then we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we're going to first do a team analysis and then uh, we're going to do the gameplay walkthrough and see how the analysis stacks up. So. Come on in. All right, hey. So let's do some team analysis. All right. Um, so for this particular matchup, um, being the finals, I kind of expect people to use some of their best lines or their best uh, Pokemon. In general, I think that Wormadam and Toxicroak are some of the best picks in this tournament. I also uh, think Beaverell is really good. Um, from what I know about her team, or like her usage of Wigglytuff is low. I think I remember talking about that at a tournament one time. So I'm using some insider knowledge and I'm kind of hoping that maybe Wigglytuff usage is still low. Um, that does seem like it's a wing attack Pidgeot, which is Legacy. And, uh, yeah, typically people that have Legacies tend to like using them. Um, that's just sort of the general philosophy of them. It's not always the case, but um, it can be a safe assumption here. So, my best bets... I'm kind of liking, I'm kind of liking Heracross a bit. Um, it can beat Ven Venusaur to the, uh, so Venusaur Sludge Bomb will one shot it, but Heracross will beat it to foul plays. A foul play won't one shot a Venusaur, but I think over time and like a more shield matchup, I think it will. So basically like the longer time goes on, the better Heracross will do against Venusaur. Um, or sorry, not Heracross, Shiftry. Um, sorry, I just woke up, so this is kind of like a fail <laughs> commentary, but yeah. So I think Shiftry, like, ultimately wins over time against the Venusaur, which is good. Um, then there's the Beaverell, it obviously beats. Um, it does totally lose to Wigglytuff. I'm just not sure if she's going to bring Wigglytuff. Um, it does well against Wormadam Trash as well. So... Basically, like, three of the picks it's strong against, but two of them, I think, are likely to show up. I think Bieberell and Wormadam are likely to show up. Uh, Skuntank is another one. It beats Bieberell in the lead. It flamethrower wrecks Wormadam. Um, I think it hedges against Wigglytuff, should Wigglytuff make an appearance. It's great against Venusaur, and I think it even has decent play against Pidgeot. So, overall, I think the Skuntank is going to be, like, something I really, really rely on. And I'm not sure if I want to run it in the lead. Um, I don't want to see the Toxicroak in the lead. So what I could do is do a Skun Tank with two bodyguards in the back to the Toxicroak. Um, Heracross and Golbat come to mind. And so now what I have to ask myself is if, if Skun Tank is in the lead... And it's an unfavorable matchup, such as mm, technically it can beat Wigglytuff. Assuming Wigglytuff doesn't hit a charm attack breakpoint against me. And then um, to like do extra damage. There's like a very specific way you have to win this gun tank matchup there. But you can take two shields for zero. Um, and you, you lose. You lose the lead and you take two shields, basically. So it, I, I kind of consider that a win. That's a huge advantage. Um, so, yeah. So let's let's just reframe how we're looking at it. So Skun Tank in the front. I'm fine with the Wigglytuff. I'm fine with... Yeah, pretty much everything but the Toxicroak, right? So... If Toxicroak is in the front, then we flip to Heracross. Heracross 
threatens the Toxicroak out. Something comes in to answer it. It might be Pidgeot. It could, I guess, be Venusaur. Um, if I fire Megahorn at Venusaur, it does neutral damage. So it's not the end of the world. Um, so that's that's kind of nice. And then Counter still does like a tremendous amount of damage. Because even though it's resisted by the Venusaur's poison typing, Counter still just does a lot of damage. So I think Heracross switch in is, <clears throat> is fine there. Um, so if I'm answered with uh, Venusaur or Wormadam or Pidgeot, I think I'm okay. Um, answering with any of those, basically, when Heracross gets to a charge move, is very threatening. Like, if you don't shield that, you're kind of, like, dead. Like, Pidgeot will take a ridiculous amount of damage from it, because Pidgeot's normal-typed and flying, so it's neutral. And close combat is just so much damage. Uh, Pidgeot is not tanky. So I think... I think a Skun Tank lead, swapping to a Heracross, and then a Golbat in the back for the inevitable Toxicroak or Wigglytuff or Venusaur, even Pidgeot. I'm uh, like I think Golbat is fine against sort of all of those, and then um, or or I think it's kind of advantaged against all of those, and then um, Bibarel is kind of the only one where it's sort of like even and kind of awkward. So. Um, I think as long as the team does well, then the Golbat should have enough resources to take care of the Beaverell. Maybe some residual damage on the Beaverell before it has to fight it. I don't know. So that seems fine. So, yeah, I don't think I want to use Shiftry, um, even though it has it's really good at separating the Beaverell Wormadam cores. Um, I think I may bring Shiftry in later if I detect that core on her side right so we're gonna we're gonna do some initial exploratory probing with skun tank because of its its sort of generalist application and then we might go into more specific hard counters to certain lines of three should we need to so i i do like the skun tank as a uh as an initial um explorer i guess and then um Yeah, I guess I guess the only real issue. So so Skun Tank is advantaged against Wormadam, but I expect the Wormadam to be played against me. A fifteen hundred on the dot Wormadam sounds like a really cool take home prize that she has, and uh I would totally use it if I were her. So um especially against my team. So if I swap from Skun Tank to Heracross, and then Heracross gets stuck against Wormadam. Um, Heracross actually takes Wormadam pretty low before dying. And what's interesting is Wormadam doesn't care how low it is against my Skun Tank. So something interesting about Skun Tank is it tends to one-shot the Wormadam with Flamethrower, but otherwise kind of struggles against all the bug buzzes and stuff. And so um, one-shotting a Pokemon when they're at 100% HP is the same as one-shotting them when they're at like 20% HP, right? So basically, I don't get any extra value out of how lethal that move is because I'm not actually taking 100% of its health. I'm taking like, you know, 50% or something. And Poison Jab is totally useless against Warbidam. So um, it's like single type resisted, I think. Um, or sing one times resisted because of the uh, steel immunity and the bug weakness. So I don't really know if I'm super comfortable with that. And then I have a Golbat, which also sucks against Wormadam. So it's it's quite possible if we don't catch the Wormadam with the Skun Tank that we might have a really, really, really rough game. The thing is... I don't really know what to do instead of that. Because if we have a Toxicroak lead, then we have a Toxicroak lead. Like, that just kind of sucks for us um, against the Skun Tank. So, maybe we swap in the Golbat. Yeah, I guess we could swap in the Golbat. The Wormadam comes out to answer it. We die then we throw a skun tank in i don't know it's kind of the same thing like unfortunately skun tank just is not 
great at killing Wormadam from half HP. Like, it's not ideal. So it's possible that we maybe just think about running Steelix. Steelix has the same weaknesses to Toxicroak in the lead. Except it also has additional weaknesses against Bibarel and Venusaur. I don't I don't really see the Venusaur having much play here. I I, I don't know. Like maybe. It just seems weird. Um like it's not like the greatest pick in the Toxic Cup like meta. And so I'm I'm sort I'm sort of hesitant against Prote I don't want to protect against Venusaur too much. Like I just don't feel like it's going to have a lot of play here. So Steelix could be an okay lead as well. I could still swap to Heracross, and I could still swap to Golbat um, later. And I think so. It'd be like Steelix lead with Heracross Golbat. And then depending on how she leads, I might consider bringing out the Skun Tank for games two and three. I think that could be okay. I think that sounds decent. Because I do think that Wormanam is going to happen. I just don't know. If I get it in the lead with Skun Tank, it's great. But if I don't, I'm so, it's sort of awkward. One thing, though, is a, what a lot of people don't do is they don't shield the close combat from the Heracross. So if I swap the Heracross in and the Worm comes in to answer it, they may not shield the close combat and they'll actually just die. Like, like Wormadam Trash will like just die to close combat. It takes like 85% of its health or 90% or something. And then a couple of counters will like actually kill it. Um, and then it will, yeah, basically win that matchup. And then it'll die to Toxic Croak and then Golbat can kill that and then... Skun Tank can take care of whatever's in the back. So, pretty interesting overall. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll, um, I'll make a toss-up between those two teams. But I think Heracross and Golbat in the back are totally fine. And uh, next, I'll jump in and we'll record the video. All right. And welcome back to the battle portion of this video. So, um, what I am going to do is let's put Heracross and Golbat in the back and then make a decision about the Skun Tank being a more generalist against most things and the Steelix being a little bit more specific um, to that initial lead. And I think... Um, hmm. We could also consider just leading Heracross... Wow. Yeah, I'm actually sorry, guys. I, I did that whole, like, workup of analysis, but I forgot that what I could actually do is a Heracross lead, and then I can toss a close combat at anything, let Heracross die. So, like, even if it's a bad matchup, I can let Heracross die, and then I can... It will it only can't survive to close combat against Wigglytuff, but otherwise, like, I can do it against Wormadam. Then bring in, like, a Steelix to sort of continue fighting the Heracross counters, and then eventually use Golbat to clean up the rest. Um, and I think that would be... I don't know. It could be just fine. So... But I think I'm going to go with my initial... my initial play for right now with the Skun Tank, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. I feel... I feel comfortable that Skun Tank has just such a wide advantage and it's really hard to know how to fight against. Okay, this is very specific. This is extremely specific how I have to do this to get two shields. I have to throw my charge moves at exactly the right timing. It has to be double crunch. Okay, interesting. Uh, we're switching to Golbat or immediately or as close as quickly as we can because Golbat is our best wall against Toxicroak. Now, granted, Golbat's also our best wall against Wigglytuff, so unfortunately we're kind of sad about that. The interesting thing, though, if this is another much... Oh, is this a Sludge Bomb? I still think we survived Sludge Bomb, so we're going to not shield. We definitely survive it if it's Mud Bomb. 
Yeah, and then we keep wing attacking down. And then I think what we do here is we actually just throw a Poison Fang right away. It's a Wormadam. Okay, so the Confusion just went through, and the Confusion damage is about to hit us and kill us. It is going to hurt. Can we switch yet? Nope, we can't. Okay, we're going to throw the Shadow Ball. We already got hit by the Confusion damage. Another Confusion just went off, and we should be pretty close to death. Yep, yeah, we are. We're pretty close to death. All right, rip GG's to us. Now, I can come in. <clears throat> either either super effective damage is going to happen to Heracross regardless. Um, I think I'm going to come in with the uh, Skun Tank, which at least resists it. Um, so what's interesting about Skun Tank is it resists Confusion. Her Heracross takes super effective to both. But Skun Tank resists confusion. Okay, we are going to shield this 100%. Uh, we have way too many shields here, and our, our big threat here is fast move damage. Okay, we're going to get the crunch out. And then, hopefully we get another shield. We do. All right. We're coming in with Heracross, and we're going to farm up to a close combat. We're going to block this. And then we're going to hope that Wigglytuff doesn't actually have a charge move ready. I don't think Wigglytuff does. So all we need to do is get to the close combat and kill the Wigglytuff. Close combat right here. This should do it. This should be enough. This is a super hard hitting move, and it's neutral against the Wigglytuff. Okay, fantastic. Then, counter down. Counter down, counter down, come on. Okay, we got the Wormadam, and uh, our Heracross died too. On turn three, I think, is when Confusion comes through with the damage. So counter is a two-turn move. So I threw one counter, which I guess may have killed it. Huh. Yeah, no, I don't know. That's a weird, that's a word, weird um, turn structure there. But I don't know. Somehow the Wormadam died at the same time the Skun Tank died, or same time Heracross died, and then Skun Tank was technically alive in the back, so it was a simultaneous KO. But then Skun Tank was alive, so it considered it as a win. So let's smack the rematch button and see what we can do to adjust this. Um, so first and foremost, there's a Wigglytuff. Didn't anticipate that. Then there was a Toxicroak. I did anticipate that, and the Wormadam, which I also anticipated. So, um, Golbat is good against two. Um, Steelix is actually good against two. And Heracross was actually bad against Wigglytuff and Werbadam, and not a great Toxicro counter, to be perfectly honest. So I think we're going to drop the Heracross for now. It might be an overreaction, because she actually might also be switching her team. Um, if I were her, I'd probably switch the... Hmm. She honestly had two of the best gun tank counters as well. The Toxicroak and Wigglytuff are some of the most, the biggest threats to my gun tank. I know I have Poison Jab for the Wigglytuff, but it it really isn't great. Like taking that neutral damage from Charm really hurts. So um, we kind of got by with that one with the skin of our teeth. It was a pretty disadvantaged like matchup overall. Um, I'm just glad that we were able to get the switch out first. That was huge. So, um, looking at this a bit further, I think Venusaur is likely to remain out of the picture, especially given what we brought on our team. So, I think with Venusaur being more out of the picture, I think that opens up Steelix a bit more. I think if the Beaverell comes in as an answer, then we still probably want uh, potentially a... Hmm... We might want our own Skun Tank still. And then... Hmm. And then I think a Steelix. So, so Steelix, Skun Tank, and maybe... Hmm. Steelix is good versus Wiggly Worm. Skun Tank is good versus Worm Wiggly. So the same... They basically have the same matchup profile. So, maybe I just do uh, Heracross as a lead. 
Yeah, I suppose that could work. Yeah, okay, we're going to do a Heracross as a lead. And I'm going to find a team that I can adjust here. Um, a lot of these are just like GPL teams I was practicing with. Uh, okay, and then Skuntank Steelix. I think this is fine. Basically what I do, what I want to do is I want to get my Skuntank. I want to switch the Skuntank in. I want to somehow get switch advantage. Hmm. I'm not sure. The Toxicroak really is a big threat. What I could do is lead... I actually like doing this sometimes, leading Golbat and then switching into... Uh, sometimes I do Shiftry to bait out the Toxicroak. Or potentially, I think now an easier one is the Skunt Tank to bait out the Toxicroak. Because Skunt Tank just has such ridiculously good matchups against everything. So yeah, we'll lead Golbat. We'll switch the Skunt Tank in. If it's a Toxicroak, we'll go Flamethrower, get a shield, we'll die. Then we'll farm it down with Golbat, and then we'll have Steelix in the back. So this is perfect. Our Golbat already landed against the Toxicroak, which is, like, honestly amazing for us. We're going to stay in this. No shields. She might switch to try and tank the Shadow Ball. Doesn't happen. Okay. Um, we are actually going to spend our own Shadow Ball before the next move comes in. Okay, we're okay. We're tossing the Shadow Ball early. That's okay. What is this Pokemon? <laughs> Hello, Camera Angle? Hello? Giving us, like, no time to react. Okay, it's a uh, Wigglytuff, so we'll get the Steelix in here. Uh, this Earthquake should threaten a pretty heavy hit here. Okay, interesting. Yeah, Wigglytuff can actually win this matchup, guys. Um... It's very, it's very tough. Uh, so I actually have to shield the Ice Beam. Or, okay, Play Rough is... Yeah, so Ice Beam's neutral and Play Rough is resisted. I probably didn't need to shield that, to be honest. Um, so let's get the Earthquake out. I was thinking about farming up a little bit more energy, but I think what I'm going to do is not do, like, a full Earthquake. I'm trying to do, like, a little bit less damage, but it didn't quite work out. Um, this Toxic Oak is going to farm the shit out of us. Yep, unfortunate. Okay, cool. Um, so let's get the Golbat in here again. Um, this might be a Sludge Bomb and probably could come very close to KOing us. It's a Mud Bomb. Nice. We totally survived that. So that's the Wormadam. I actually figured it was likely the Wormadam to come in because... Uh, so I was ready to switch the Golbat out in advance. Like, I was, I was ready to get the Golbat the hell out of there. Like, because that confusion damage really, really hurts and could take me out. Um, so there's the shield down. Uh, this is going to be a uh, probably an Iron Head. I don't think it's a Bug Buzz, but I'm still going to shield it. Okay, it's a Bug Buzz, so I'm just bad at counting, and that's good for me. That's three confusions for... And then we actually have a higher attack stat, so we, we're going to win any CMP ties anyways. Um, so down goes the Wormadam. Flamethrower is a huge, huge nuke. And then we got the Toxicroak there with a little bit of cleanup with the Poison Jabs. Um, so good games. Uh, let's jump in for a Game 3, and we'll see. It's, all, it's always optional to do a Game 3, but um, we'll see how it goes. Um, which team would I like to use? I'm actually considering a Heracross lead. Uh, I really wanted to try that against this team. It sounded fun. So um, so let's do Heracross. Then let's consider letting Heracross stay in a bad matchup and dying. As long as it's not a Wigglytuff, I think I'm going to do it. If it's a good matchup, then I'll obviously stay. And then if it's like a Wormadam, then I think my best answer might be a Sh Shiftry or... Yeah, actually, Shiftry sounds really good. And then a Golbat. In the back. What did we see last time? It was Wormadam.
I think it was just Wormadam Toxicroak Wigglytuff again. It was just Toxicroak in the lead. So yeah, pretty pretty awkward. I may end up going instead of Golbat, I might end up going jeez, we just <clears throat> We're really weak to talk to Croak. The shiftery is just really awkward, I think. I think I want the Steelix, because the Steelix answers Wormadam decently, so does Shiftry, but Steelix also answers Wigglytuff. And as far as we can tell, Beaverell's not coming in. That would be the reason to use my Shiftry, is if Beaverell came in. Right? Because Beaverell's strong against Steelix and weak against uh, Shiftry. Like, Shiftry beats it really well. So here we're just kind of using the Pokemon that seems to work best for the situation. Okay, this is not something we can deal with. So we're going to swap this Steelix in early, hopefully get some farm. By the time the Toxicroak comes in, we might be able to uh, Earthquake. Yeah, we got the Earthquake. Nice. This is going to get us a shield. Then uh, we are going to get countered down, and then our Golbat is going to come in and clean it up. Full farm down. Nice. Very well played. That's good. Um, okay, so Golbat is going to take a lot of damage. The other thing I was thinking of is potentially tossing back Heracross in. I don't know. I think Heracross is okay to to do like a shields down sort of type fight. Um, I'm going to not... Yeah, it's painful. It's painful, y'all. Man, I, I was hoping it was going to be another Mud Bomb. I kind of wanted to shield it, to be honest. So I was hoping the Wigglytuff wasn't coming in. Be or I, was hope I honestly was preparing for the Wigglytuff to not come in. Ooh, wow, I thought I had more Poison Fangs than that. Okay, Heracross, it's time to just punch the hell out of this thing. Come on, buddy. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, so he can't even get to the close combat, unfortunately. Like, he just dies to Charm right before he hits the close combat. So, yeah, it's just... Yeah, that Wigglytuff is unfortunate. It's just a really tough fight. And I knew that the Heracross lead was likely to not work. Um, I just wanted to try it against maybe either a Wormadam or like a Wormadam or a Pidgeot, I think would have been really kind of just interesting because I probably would have let him stay in, throw the Cost Combat, die, and then switch in my counter. Rather than actually switching and throwing in something and getting locked in, right? Like rather than switching to like a Steelix and getting locked in against a Toxicroak, I just stay in die, I get a shield, right? Or I, like, do a severe amount of damage and potentially just win. So, I get a shield from the close combat, I die, then I throw Steelix in, and then I actually have a favorable matchup, right? And then if and then if she switches the Toxicroak in, I respond with Golbat. And then now, like, I pretty much just win the game. So, that's kind of how I look at it. Um... Yeah, that's kind of how I look at it, I guess. So, yeah, that would have been fun, and that's kind of a cool, like... It's kind of a cool strategy I've been working on recently, and I wanted to try it out. It's just, unfortunately, Wigglytuff is the one thing that doesn't work there. Because I can't force a shield out of Heracross. Like, Heracross can't force a shield, because he just can't get to close combat. Otherwise, I would have stayed in, close combat, die to Wiggly, and do the same exact shit that I just said. I just, like, yeah. So, um, either way, uh, GG's for sure. Uh, win, win, loss, and then uh, Worm, Wiggly, Toxicroak. Great lineup from her all around. Really well played, farming me down on that Steelix, um, and tossing like so much energy at Golbat. Like, I actually lost a ton of health on that Golbat. I was thinking about shielding because I knew, but I I knew there was ultimately like a Wormadam in the back, and the moment I switch Heracross in, he's gonna get charmed down, and I don't know. It was rough. It was really rough. <laughs> Losing the lead like that is rough. There's some really strong hard counters there. 
I should have been using more of my generalists, to be perfectly honest. Um, but uh, but yeah, super cool games. Uh, thank thanks everybody, and um, special thanks to our local tournament organizers for organizing our local tournament inside of a remote cup uh, because of all the coronavirus stuff. So. Um, yeah, super fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis throughout the tournament, um, each round kind of doing a real big deep dive into the team matchups just to have a little bit of like preamble ahead of times that really helps to solidify a lot of uh, potential things that could go wrong. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe, all that cool stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.